Okay, um, first thing to say is that I'm sorry if the sound is a little bit strange on this recording because um, I'm sitting in Ljubljana and um, sitting in front of the window and outside the window there's uh, two, I think, different musical events, possibly band practices, possibly performances of some kind or another, it's hard to tell. Um, I am right next door in this hotel to the music school, so that might explain some of what's happening out there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, The Quiet Volume, um, which is the collaboration that I made with um, Ant Hampton. And um, Quiet Volume is a, it's a piece that I'm really proud of. Um, I think because it it's, takes such a different angle and has such a different approach to performance and to the idea of performance, the idea of theatre. Um, in my work with Forced Entertainment, I've uh, and in other contexts, I've done a lot of projects that you know within the frame of theatre itself try to challenge what it is that takes place there, try to rethink uh, the possibilities of, of the stage. But um, Quiet Volume is, is a, a very unusual piece, at least for my practice, in that it, um, it involves uh, an audience of only two people who are also, in a certain way, the performers of the piece. Um, and those two people go on a kind of journey that's constructed through recorded sound, recorded voice, um, pile of novels in which certain passages become really important and a pair of notebooks that um, Ant and I made which are also in a way a kind of guide through the material that's there um, in the space of the library which is where the performance takes place. Um, what I like very much is that it, it, it makes a very intimate piece um, something very uh, something very deep, I think, something very contemplative and something which takes place in a number of different places. So you know you can say that it takes place in the library itself, in which other people are busy going about their business they're, they're doing what they normally do. Um, you're with headphones so they don't really know what's going on for you. Um, it takes place in the library, it takes place inside the set of novels that we chose to work with as kind of material, selecting fragments from them in order to sort of create links between books that aren't normally connected. Um, it takes place as well um, in the notebooks that Ant and I made, which are also guides for the performance in a certain way. And it takes place, you know, probably finally in the imagination of the spectator slash performer um, and it interests me a lot that because I think in some ways that's where all performance takes place um, in that space of your own mind as you're processing, linking, dealing with things and this piece is perhaps very pure about that it sort of says that process that's going on between the page with written text and your own imagination, that's the sort of interesting space and we focus a lot on what goes on between a book and a reader, um, or between a voice and a listener, or between a word and uh, a reader who's making pictures uh, or, or processing ideas from those words. Um, so it's very pure um, and in that sense I think it, it gets right to the heart of something that you know has always interested me a lot in the theatre work. Somehow in this form we're able to approach that rather more deeply. Um, the other thing to say about it I guess is that it's, um, it's a piece that um, responds to the environment that it's in. So it's, a, it's staged in, set in, positioned in. Um, you know, a functioning public library or functioning library. We've presented it all over the world in, in different libraries, from probably the smallest, noisiest library in London to, um, you know, some of the biggest and grandest libraries in 
cities like Berlin or Buenos Aires or um, you know all over the place. I think one of its concerns is, uh, as I said, it, it's very focused on this act of uh, relation between a reader and a text. Um, and in that way, it takes you back to your experiences, um, your early experiences probably with language, not quite understanding what reading is, enjoying stories um, as they're told to you. Um, and um, maybe that experience that, that we can all still have of staring at alphabets that we don't understand, understanding that there are marks on a page or on a surface which mean something but not knowing what they mean. So it, it kind of pushes into that sort of strangeness that there is at the, at the heart of written language, that inside that set of rather arbitrary marks on a page are ideas and stories and experiences. It sort of pushes on that, tries to think about what that, what that is. Um, more than anything though, I think what I like about the piece um, is that it, it does have, you know, a, a kind of dramaturgy that really draws you into um, an extraordinary sort of journey with your partner, with the other performer, audience member that you're with. So it's sort of also about that relationship and I think it, it works really nicely with that. Um, Quiet Volume is obviously uh, it, close to um, other projects that Ant uh, Hampton has done um, and I think you know he's done now several projects maybe five or six um, which really work on this idea of the performer the spectator who is also a kind of performer uh, and how that spectatorial performer is negotiating a set of clues and cues um, in the form of different media it might be recorded sound it might be printed material, might be video, could be you know any number of things, but basically the, the, the key to all those pieces is this idea of the, the spectator as someone who's following a path that's made of different media, if you like. Um, and the second piece that Ant is presenting in, in New York um, around the same time as Quiet Volume is called Q China. And that's a similar principle except that it's uh, really more using video than, than audio, and it's looking at setting up a kind of impossible encounter with somebody uh, in a very distant part of the world, in China. Um, so, again, I think what's attractive about this work is that it finds new solutions to and new um, approaches to the question about what theatre is, what theatre can be, what performance is, what performance can be at this moment. And I think, you know, for me, uh, Quiet Volume uh, is really there as, uh, you know, a favourite piece um, in that it really uh, gets deep into something in a, in a, in a, I think in an interesting way.